Okay. Welcome to Wyla Reviews. I am Kate. I am here with Suara. Hi. And we are going to talk about the Marvels. <laughs> I... that, that pause says it all, Suara. <laughs> that pause says it all. Listeners, viewers, I went in hoping to like it. I just I mean your wall behind you right now is Kamala yeah. Khan. Like Yes. Yes. Like my top heroes of all time. And I will say it's not necessarily that the film did her that dirty. It's just it didn't give her much to work with. But yeah. Iman Vellani, who is one of the high points, made the best of it. But in all, it was like almost nothing, you know? Yeah. Okay, so let's get into it. We'll do it sure. our format as we always do. Yeah. yeah. You kind of alluded to it. You went in wanting the best. Um, what were your expectations for the film? I was hoping for something that would, would be a relevant and meaningful story between these three leads that, you know, from my point of view as a Miss Marvel fan, would allow for Kamala to have those abundant moments she has in the comics, that crucial character growth of meeting Carol, realizing that Carol isn't all hot shit and that she needs to be her own hero. It's not that she always hates Carol or anything like that. It's that, oh, I can't be like you. I have to be my own hero. Yeah. And we got literally none of that. For Carol, Captain Marvel, by the way, this movie might as well have been named Captain Marvel 2, but even then it didn't do much for Carol, frankly. It didn't. It didn't. Uh, I was hoping to learn what she's been up to all these years. The movie just doesn't really say what she's been doing at all. And I guess for Monica, I was hoping for her to have full emotional catharsis and for her to have a meaningful journey, for her to like take up maybe the mantle of Photon or something like that. But she was also like Kamala, like a sidekick to Carol for most of it. But again, even the main character of Carol Damers didn't have much to work with. This movie was so shallow for all of them. I, I mean, sorry, I'm sorry. I know I'm getting yeah, ahead yeah, of you're, myself. You're going ahead of yourself right now. So. It's, <laughs> it's just shocking to me that this movie, which had so many writers couldn't give me the base of my expectations. So I think that this is, this is my thing. So I can go into my expectations before we drive into bringing apart the movie. Um, the amount of post-production hell the film was in made me really worried. The amount of writers on the film made me really worried. That many writers on a film is usually not for good reasons. There's And also... While I do admit that the Variety article about Nia da Costa, like being on another set, like a lot of directors do that, that was dumb. However, Nia da Costa's own comments about the film not being her vision and how Feige would call and everything, it gave me a lot of apprehension. Now, the thing is, while I have that, I had that apprehension. I love Miss Marvel. Like the basis of my entire academic career that I had was writing about Miss Marvel, was writing about the importance of Muslim heroes, not just Muslim villains, and like what that does for both Muslim youth and for people who may not know Muslims personally, but see them in media. And so Miss Marvel has always been a like she is a foundational character not just to who I, I was when I grew up as an adult but really in teaching me how to look at media differently than what I did pre my academic life so I wanted her to have a lot I wanted Monica to very simply be able to process her own emotions and to stop being a vessel for somebody else's which is very much what she was in WandaVision and I think this film recreates some of those same missteps, which was wild to me because I thought with a black woman director like and writer, because DaCosta did write part, you know, parts of the film, I thought that we wouldn't 
have Monica done that way again. And then for Carol, I wanted to like her because I, I actually do like Brie Larson as an actress, like um, Lessons in Chemistry, which is on Apple right now, which is her, her most recent show is phenomenal. And she really showcases her range in that series. But what's funny is the demeanor that she has in that series is what I expect from Carol Danvers. And I don't get that in the Carol Danvers we have in the film in, or any of the iterations. And so my expectations were tempered and measured, but I wanted to like it. Um, I wanted to like it and enjoy it. And I think moving into what we thought about the film we can kind of each talk about we can go back and forth with a couple of our gripes because it sounds like neither of us really had a great time at the theater um we can I will say do you want to start with something good um I think the praise here is that the actors the, the movie doesn't fail because the actresses they're all trying very hard um and their dynamic is very good they have a chemistry that I think is hard to bake into people who just meet. I think that there is an empathy and intelligence to Monica that is needed and refreshing for a character for a female character in in Marvel very specifically. They tend to be written the same way. Um, Iman Vellani is fantastic. Like she she captures the awe of childhood so well. Like they don't forget that she's a teenager and they don't forget that she's a fangirl. Like she is so wonderfully handled. And that is because of Amon Vellani's acting and her comedic timing, which is very good. Um, and for Carol's part, Carol's there. <laughs> Carol is the, the thing that they all revolve around. And I'm sad about that, but. My, yes. ni my nice thing is that she's necessary for the movie to happen <laughs> I agree with you about the lead actresses they did the best with what they had and the script and the direction it ultimately led to them just being one note yeah. Not ha none of them really having that much to work with none of them really having that much character growth or development while we the i agree with you that the best part of the movie i remember this one scene of just them in the ship and yes. hanging out no a hundred that was great yeah when they're finding out how to adjust and use their entangled powers like mm -hmm. as like in a fight and just like in general it is the sweetest thing it is yeah. like a problem solving like it's very good it's a great montage yeah like if we had more of that if we had more scenes of them learning about each other having them actually drive the plot themselves because by the way big surprise this is another one no like lackluster villain from marvel i and it sucks because i love zawe ashton uh she was great um in this one british period drama film that came out a few years ago um mr malcolm's list uh she's great in that but yeah just this is like a generic kree villain who's gonna destroy the universe when i like was that. writing I, my review yeah. i had to google her name because i could <laughs> not remember it yeah <laughs> Yeah, like Don, oh yeah, Don Barn or something. Don <laughs> Don Don runs. Bar. Yes, yes. Don, or Don. Bar, uh, Don I Bar. it's just like we've I, I said in my review uh for the New Arab, which will be out this Friday. Um, uh, it uh it was just so one note. We've seen this before. I don't care. I was so bored throughout this movie. This movie, I felt like, like to pretend as though it had both heart and spectacle when ultimately it's just very shallow. Yeah. It doesn't know how to take its various parts and put them together. And also on that note, the editing in this movie is atrocious. That was the issue. So that was the issue yeah. for me. Like, it feels like very different films put together. Um, I saw somebody mention that when the movie is Miss Marvel season two, it's doing really well. And I agree. All the moments that feel like they were picked out of Miss Marvel, like it opens with an animation and it's great. 
and the family moments. And in the final act, there's a big scene with some cats, which I'm going to blame you for the rest of your life, Suara. Um, all of those things, that feels like Miss Marvel season two. And it, it it's very good when it's that. It's so good when it's that. But then there are other parts where it's like, okay, cool. We're going to talk about like Carol's reliving trauma but then it's not just going to be hers she's going to force monica to relive it and then she like they're never really gonna like go through like and deal with those emotional beats that it brings up because i think that i feel like there is a version of this movie there is something there there is a story about family there is a story about seeing your heroes and seeing that being a hero is about making tough choices and sometimes you have to leave somebody behind which is mentioned at the beginning of the film never really touched on again there is a story about regret when you've made those choices and then the story about seeing it as a child and trying to rectify meeting your hero with the reality of heroism but none of that is let to breathe all of that is edited together in a situation where you have gags that overstay their welcome repeatedly and it isn't to say that i don't like comedy and film i really love i love the guardians franchise i love suicide squad i love dark comedy in moments where you think it's not because comedy itself is a valve on the tension in your story. Like, I just got done playing Alan Wake 2. There's literally, like, a musical number in the middle of it that's done live action in this video game. But it's done as a release on the pressure that the game has been ramping up. Yeah. It lets go of the tension. It lets you breathe. But if you keep your... If you keep it open, you lose all steam and Mm -hmm. momentum that you had for those emotional moments. And that was the issue here. The comedy was not relevant. In the examples you listed, directed by and written by James Gunn, it's always relevant. It's always set up punchline, set up punchline, relevant to the emotional stakes of the story. This was all over the place. This was a splattering mess of like comedy. And I didn't feel anything at the musical scene on the planet. I just thought this is random. This is trying to. It made my head hurt. Like like, legitimately the way that it was (laughs) scored. Like the yeah, way that it, it dealt so with the bad. voices coming in, it was really weird. Um, I also have another note on that, but continue. No, I, I was just gonna say, like, I and I say this in my review as well. Like, this movie felt like they were just throwing anything and everything they could at the wall. Again, it's a patchwork. It's evident there were extensive reshoots. This did not cohesively come together at all, in my yeah. opinion, and. It's funny, like, when I'm thinking about, like, Quantumania compared to this, this last MCU movie we reviewed, Quantumania, like, no, I think similarly, there were moments that could have been expanded to something better, just like here. Uh, But this one, whereas Quantumania often had lackluster, you know, CGI and stuff like that, this movie was very garish. This movie had so much splattering of the light and effects and, like, things are throwing at the wall. And it's just, it did not, again, come together well. Yeah. I also, like, so, like, to bring up the musical scene, which at this point, like, everybody knows coming. They know that Park So Jen's character uh, communicates in song. Um, it was frustrating to me because I think that it really showed some of the limitations in the costume department that we haven't really seen from Marvel. Like we know that the VXF work, the VXF, uh, the VFX workers are overworked. And that's one of the reasons why we've been having these really awful, um, CGI moments, which we do have here specifically when it comes to a character moving in the background that they're up against. Like it is very clear they're in a Best Buy parking lot. Um, that's a reference to Quantum Manium. Or which one? No, to one of them. Was it Quantumania? I don't know. One of the many things that have been filmed in a Best Bike parking lot as of late. Um, But the biggest thing for me is at the very least, Marvel has always been on point with their costuming department. Um, That scene on Eldana, the costumes are bad. They're ill-fitted. Like, they, like, Park Sejin's character that poor man like wh- why would you put him in that and I think what frustrates me as a film like I'm not saying that Park Sojourn needed to have a big role because this isn't his film it's about the women who are in it 
but the way that he's played specifically when we're in a situation where like Korean men are very specifically being used in Western media as like a tool just for eye candy while ignoring the fact that they are extremely skilled actors. Like Park Sejin is a lead character in Concrete Utopia, which is South Korea's nom like the it's what they're putting forward for the Oscars. Um, he's a joke here and not in like a funny way. Like it feels like there were sections of it that were cut out. And I think that this is this is where I hit like a wall. I don't necessarily think I don't think movies need to be longer short. I need I think they need to be as long as they need to be to tell a story. And if that's three hours, cool. If that's an hour and a half, that's cool. If that's an hour 15, that's also cool. 105 is the shortest runtime for any Marvel film. And this film feels like it and not in like a good way it feels like there were things cut out wholesale that were supposed to be building up emotional moments or were supposed to be building up investment like we don't get a lot of time with the people who have been devastated and then we don't even get a lot of time of our heroes reflecting on that we don't get a lot of time with the choices made and we don't get a lot of time with the emotions and I think ultimately editing Editing and what I'm assuming are reshoots and the guiding hand of Feige, which I can tell, or Feige, which I can tell, which you can see very clearly in choices that are made, especially towards the end where it's like, okay, cool. Now we're in the, now we have to build something up phase so we can't process the traumatic thing that just happened. Um, It lets it down. And I think that that's Mm -hmm. what frustrates me is because these actresses and these characters in general deserve so much more and it's it feels almost thrown away it feels like blue beetle felt where it was just kind of like and i loved blue beetle we also reviewed that here you can scroll through and look at that i loved blue beetle but there were moments in that film that just felt like the studio needed to get it out and i think that that's what happened here Totally. And I will just say, you know, I think for both of us, you know, Blue Beetle, exce- you said you loved it. It's exceptionally better than this movie, this mess. And it just like, this, you know, is, it falls into the Marvel trap of like setting stuff up for the future. And I'm just going to go ahead and say it. Both of the cameos that were in this movie, they reeked of desperation to me. They reeked of Marvel Studios being like, hey, see, you know, this favorite thing of yours you know you like you can look forward to the future now i'm just like this is just bad this is just random this does not inspire any confidence for that said future and they don't have confidence in the characters they have in their rich like again with miss marvel there's a huge rich well of storytelling to pull from and could have easily made this a stronger, more cohesive, well, and, there and like, moments relevant where film. They, yeah, there, there are moments they can do it, it looks, and they don't. Yeah, they don't there, do it. It's so there frustrating. Are very specific moments where it looks like they're going to go down that path. It looks like it's going to confront her idolization of Carol and why she needs to be somebody different and say that she wants. And it, it's set up, and it's right there. But they don't do it. And I think they don't do it because then that would make Carol somebody who isn't perfect to do more things. Just let her be imperfect. We don't want perfect woman superheroes. To, let them be imperfect. Let them be messy. Let let Carol Danvers be an asshole. Let, yeah. And let them be like the right kind of messy. Because like this, they're messy in this movie, but they're just like incoherently messy. Let them be dynamically messy. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, this movie just reads as something by committee for me. And to shift gears a little bit, I thought a lot of the dialogue was really atrocious. Um, None of the jokes landed for me. Uh, I think you said in your tweet review, like they just felt randomly shoved in. Well, also like we talked about earlier, the humor wasn't relevant. Yeah. And I... (sighs) Yeah, I'm just I'm I'm extremely disappointed. 
I went in with good faith. I was like, even though I honestly did have low expectations, I went in with good faith. I said to myself, I am going to judge and review this movie as I will any others, just based on how I personally enjoy it. There were some moments of promise that, like you said, just got completely floundered. And it's, yeah. I don't know what else to say at this point. No, it's, I mean, we can wrap. It is it is one of those things where I, I think that there is just a lot of issues because I don't think the movie knew what it wanted to be. I don't think it knew how it wanted its characters to interact. And I do think actually including all three of them was a problem. I think that there is a really solid film here. If you have Carol and Monica working through their their issues, working through the fact that Carol thinks that she's the only one who has to carry her regret when in reality, Monica's left to hold her grief herself. And in this film, they don't get to express that. And Monica very much is just a vessel for yet another woman's grief again and regret and all of these things and it's frustrating because if they had had more time together they could have explored that on the other hand like um Kamala is also a character who could have had such great storytelling with either one of them into understanding what it's like to do more outside of Jersey City, to do more outside of your home place and to explore and have an adventure. And that's another movie like her exploring the galaxy and trying to save it and also learning like what it means to be a superhero and the t- like the toughness of that. That's another story. And that would have been a good story. And it could have been with Monica. It could have been with Carol. But we get neither. Instead, we have a film where we are constantly moving between three women that are really good actresses. But none of them are allowed to really shine and develop as characters. So. Yeah. It's just overwhelming disappointment. And sometimes in the moment of watching the movie you might think oh this isn't so bad but again upon reflection this often happens for me either with a film i really love a la in or across the spider verse the more i think about the more i love it or it goes in the opposite direction with like quantum mania in this the more i think about the more i poke holes at the more i'm like oh my god this is actually terrible and just like i'm yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm just gonna go ahead and say, like, on a wider perspective, I don't have faith for the MCU, like, period anymore. Yeah. I don't think that it's gonna like do any of our favorite characters justice. At least if it continues the machine, it is. Unless there is, you know, per the Variety article and per the evidence of this movie, unless there is like a massive shift, I just, yeah, I think this French franchise is becoming DOA. So. Yeah. yeah no I mean I don't disagree and it, it's something that sucks is because like the MCU has given me some phenomenal moments like I'm always going to hold on to my mom watching Endgame and saying Mija he's worthy when Captain America has the hammer and I'm going to remember everything leading up to it I remember Tony Stark's journey I'm going to remember the gosh the way T'Challa jumped out like like his introduction is one of the best introductions ever done for a character in a team up film like i i it, it it's so fun like they're comic books and are just another type of storytelling and movies adapting them i think need to understand the very specific voice with which these comics speak and what these and what these heroes are speaking with and what these heroes represent um and allow them to feel messy but have it be dynamic and allow them to explore things that aren't just the world is happy all the time and you can say oh well marvel does that marvel kind of does that it always pulls itself back and in this movie there are very clear paths where if something serious is happening now you're gonna hurt cats and like those are so tonally disparate that it's jarring and i i I do think that Marvel is, is pretty much DOA for me. I think that I this is my off point. Um, but I'm not happy about that. Like, I, I think that like a yeah, lot of the times, 
what like when Marvel fans like, like when MCU fans specifically because I think MCU fans and Marvel comic fans are very different people um when MCU fans hear people say that like oh well like the Marvel universe is just gone for me I don't care anymore they think we're being like we want to be pessimistic we don't like these superheroes are magic I would have never thought that I'd live in a world where it was cool to have comics I used to have little boys bully me and take my comics from me because I wasn't allowed to read them because it was for boys and like I like I and, and the girls didn't read them growing up and so like I had nowhere to go and we're in a we're in a world now we're in a we're in a, a a pop culture bubble now where heroes and the importance that they mean to people is actually being captured and being captured in so many different mediums that people are getting to unashamedly love them and so because of that i want more from marvel because i know what these heroes give us in the stories that we read on the page i want them to match that and i know that they're trying to do like a more multi-universal thing but right now it is just eating into everything that they've made and it almost feels like every character that has come in this last phase they're sacrificial lambs for the something bigger which the post credit yeah, yes. scene of this film is obviously showing and i'm i don't want to fall in love with a character just to have them thrown away to move to something new and i mm -hmm. i that's where i am uh swara what would you yeah. rate this out of a 10 uh i just want to say one other thing oh I yeah think, well like we said before general audiences are also tired of this and i'm just yeah. gonna leave it like that five out of ten you know it's um there's a few high points that you know save it from being absolutely terrible but it is very mediocre um below middle of the road i mean five out of ten is like a bad for me so yeah that's what i'm think i'm probably gonna stick with five out of ten i am with that of i am at a four or five nice i'm at a four yeah, we want five to like out of it. ten <laughs> i'm frustrated but the thing is too is like if we don't start critiquing these movies heavily and if we don't stop yelling at anybody who does critique them we're going to keep getting the same issues and so I do think that instead of like me feeling bad and grading Marvel on a curve, which is what I've I've done traditionally, um, because I have those rose colored glasses coming out of them, I don't have those rose colored glasses anymore, and I just want something to change because I want these characters. I want Amon to do so much more and get yes, so much more and better. Yeah. Anyway, these are, two, these are two brown people and one Muslim here who are telling you this. So don't call us toxic. <laughs> anyway, um, Suara, where can people find you? Y'all can find me um, on whatever social media at Spider Suarez. Um, whatever you want to follow me on, <laughs> you know, it's all a mess. Um, Y'all can uh, check out my, uh, I'm a freelance writer. Check out my writing app, but why though? At the new era, at io9 and other websites. And I'm the one of the co-hosts of the Middle Geeks podcast, uh, which is on Nerds of Color Podcast Network. We cover anything and everything related to Southwest Asian, North African, Swana Media, and our takes. We're actually doing a review of the Marvels on our podcast, so stay tuned for that. And again, stay tuned for my uh, written review of the Marvels on the new era. So yeah, that's where y'all can find me. You can find me at Mammoth Randier on everything. I'm primarily still on the sinking ship that is Twitter, I guess X. Um, and you can read my full thoughts on butwhytho.net. It is going to be linked down below in that little space. I don't know what you we're still new to YouTube. Um, it'll be down there. Read through it. I explain everything that I pretty much talked about here, but I go into detail. No spoilers, of course, because the film is not out yet um so yeah read that um and let us know what you think um it's totally like totally okay to disagree with us totally okay to agree with us just let us know and you can find our site at but why though pc and check out all of our written work at but why though dot net <sighs> we're done we're done <laughs> bye thanks everyone take care